Hey loves, welcome to my first ever YouTube video. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how I achieved this custom pinup style burgundy two frontal ponytail. So first things first, I color the two frontals and the bundles. I have a 13 by six um, frontal, 13 by four frontal and some pieces of hair. So to achieve the cherry red color, I'm using the no bleach method, using just the L'Oreal um, high color in magenta, two boxes of those, and Marigel in the color 6.66. I'll list all the names of the products down below. So here I mix all the dye contents into a mixing bowl and then apply it onto the frontals and the pieces of hair. So after I squeeze all my dye into my mixing bowl, I then add the 40% developer into the bowl as well and then I mix thoroughly. If you're doing this for the first time, I do advise that you measure. I've been doing this for a while, so I've developed some really bad habits. So now I am applying the dye onto the frontal. Um, I am using the mixing brush onto the longer shaft of the hair and then towards the roots I use a comb. This is to avoid bleeding through the lace. Um, I did end up getting it on the lace a little bit but um, because I knew it was going to be in a ponytail fashion I wasn't too bothered but please do not follow that advice. Take your time. Um, go through the hair as gently and as thoroughly as you can without getting on the lace. So for the second frontal, I do the same thing. I just repeat the same process. So for the bundles you want to coat the whole entire hair with the dye making sure that you open the wefts and really work um, in between those wefts to avoid any blotchiness and any black peeking through the red. So I ended up leaving the dye on the frontals and the bundle for about three hours. Um, because we used no bleach it took a while for it to process but um, trust and believe, take your time don't rush this process and you will achieve something along the lines of like a deep burgundy type colour. So it's the next day and I have my beautiful client Rachel here for her install. If you follow me on my Instagram or my TikTok, you would have seen Rachel's face before. Um, I love Rachel so much. She's one of my favourite clients. Um, she's always down to try new colours and new styles. We're always creating something new and adventurous. Um, you'll be seeing a lot more Rachel on my channel, for sure. So firstly, I blow dry Rachel's hair thoroughly and then I go in with my curl defining straighteners for her roots. And then I use my wide plate Remington straighteners for the rest of her hair.
when you're doing this process you want to make sure that you're using heat protector throughout your client's hair this ensures that their hair is protected when using high heat Here you see me gathering her hair into my desired um, ponytail height um, and making sure that it's okay on all angles so you see me going from left to right um, you want to make sure you're doing this so that you make sure that it's in the middle and you're happy with how it looks when gathering um, hair into ponytails i like to work in sections um, this is my preferred method try the method that works best for you um, ideally for me this is like how i prefer to um, do my ponytails i then use my got to be freeze blasting spray and then spray it on her hair um, making sure that it's covering all the places that I need it to cover however I don't overuse it I don't overkill <laughs> I use just the right amount that's good for me I still want her hair to be moldable and shapeable um, just in case I do make any errors so um, work light-handedly first and then um, if you need to add more then by all means add more When moulding her hair into place, I use my blow dryer on cool and warm settings. So I alternate between the two. So once I go straight directly onto her hair, it's core heat. And then when I'm working from afar, it's always um, a little bit hot. After I gather her hair into a ponytail, I then split her hair into two pigtails and then wrap them around. Um, this will give me a good foundation when I am attaching the bundles onto her um, hair. So now I am applying a stocking cap to Rachel's head. I will be doing the stocking cap method when doing two frontal ponytails or 360 ponytails. You want to make sure that you're doing this method. This is to ensure that um, you can use as much glue as you need to when applying frontals and it also protects um, your client's hair. So now I spray the perimeter of her hair and then I use my bold hold um, glue and I just go over that just where her hair, just in front of where her hair starts. So when I start to dry it and I start to cut in place, that place is secure and I don't get any lifting. So now I am sewing a rough circle around the top perimeter of her head 
um, you can use the two frontals as a guideline as to where you should stop the sewing. After which you can now cut the top part of the um, stocking cap, which we won't need. Now you can cut the stocking cap around her hairline. You want to make sure that this is dry and not damp at all. So please take your time and use your blow dryer or put your client under the dryer just to make sure that the stocking cap is completely dry before cutting. Guys, if you notice my dry arms, you didn't notice it, please. No dry arm slander on my YouTube channel. Um, just ignore those ashy arms. You then want to use a foundation shade or powder shade close to your client's skin tone colour. So for Rachel, I use Maybelline Fit Me's foundation in the colour 312. So just before I place the frontal, I just want to clarify that I use a 13 by 6 and 13 by 4. The 13 by 4 goes at the front and then the 13 by 6 goes at the back. I use the 13 by 6 at the back because I want a high pony. I use the same foundation shade on her frontal and then I place the frontal just in front of where the stocking cap stops. So now you want to get your client to securely hold the frontal in place. You want to make sure that you let them know not to move during this process. Um, this will ensure that all sides are covered, all the um, stocking cap um, and their hairline is covered completely by the frontal and they will need to hold this in place just until you sew the back of the frontal in place. You want to make sure that the back of the frontal is flat and isn't bumpy at all. Um, this ensures that when you do start gathering the hair into a ponytail, you don't get any of the ripples that can make the frontal ponytail look unflattering. Whilst your client is still holding the ends of the lace, you want to cut the lace around the ears. If you guys would like to see a more detailed frontal application um, in a better angle, please let me know. Um, and I will be sure to make a separate video of where I install a frontal in a better angle so you can see without my arms in the way. Here you see me plucking out hair from the frontal that are close to Rachel's eyebrows um, and also I did so in the front as well just to give a more realistic hairline. When applying lace glue onto my client's heads I always work in sections starting from the front and then the sides. And because Rachel wanted her hair on for a long time, I added about four layers as opposed to three. When the glue turns clear and tacky, I then bring the lace to where the glue starts and then using the back of my comb, I push the lace down in for an extra mount. I then cut a small section of lace and then I go in with my glue for any spots that I may have missed. Okay. 
After the middle section of her head, I then go on to the sides. After every layer of gluing, I then use my blow dryer on cool settings. So remember when I said that you should take your time when dyeing your lace? Um, here's a prime example, I did manage to get some of the dye on the lace and you can see there's a little patch right where um, the side of her head is. I did try to conceal it as much as I could with um, a makeup afterwards but just a little advice, be very light handed when um, dyeing your lace. So I did the other side off camera, um, this is what her hair looks like now with the frontal on, um, I haven't melted her hair yet, I'll do, be doing that now, um, but yes, I always work with HE lace now because I just love the results, it gives you that natural um, hairline look without the lace showing too tough, so I really advise if you're going to do frontal ponytails, consider HG lace. I will make sure to list all the products I use to melt her lace in the description bar below. It is a lengthy list. Um, I do like my lace laid. Um, so if you want to find out what I used, it will be in the description bar below. So now here's the tricky part. Um, you want to make sure that your client is holding the lace in place to where you see fit. Making sure that they don't move at any point. Um, I moved the frontal just below where the stocking cap ended, I hope that makes sense. So not just where the stocking cap starts but I moved it for just a little bit so that um, it gives a better effect of scalp. And just like the front portion of the frontal you want to make sure that the rim of the frontal where I'm sewing now is flat and not bumpy at all um, so make sure um, whilst you're sewing you make sure you spread it as much as you can to make sure it's flat so then I go towards the right of her nape um, naturally hairlines tend to go into a V line shape when it goes towards the nape of the neck um, so what I'm doing is taking my comb and just carving out a sort of diagonal line to where I um, the stocking cap stops and I'll be cutting it ever so slightly to give me that desired diagonal effect. So whilst the front portion of her head is melting, 
the band goes around the circumference of her head but please do not <laughs> please do not glue the lace while that band is still on um later on i'll be taking it off i just wanted the front portion to melt whilst i work on the back So please be mindful um, when you're sewing the front or onto your client's head at the back. Um, you can't should be able to put their head forward without having the stocking cap or their natural hair showing. Um, we don't want our client to be restricted by this hairstyle. We want to be able to make it flexible for them to wear. So just be mindful of that when um, sewing the back of the front or. So now I've got Rachel to hold down her hair. I realized that there was just too much hair towards the back of her neck. So I'm just carving out the hair that we won't need. That I'll be cutting off after gluing. So if you're doing this for the first time, I do suggest that you use some sort of a marker like a concealer in a dark or lighter shade just to mark where you would like to glue your frontal. What I then do is glue the first layer then pull down the frontal to see if I like where it sits and if I'm happy with that I then go in with more layers. So I use three layers of my bold hold glue and then for my final layer, I go in with my Shea Styles waterproof glue for that extra hold. So once I applied all my layers, I got Rachel to angle her head at a 45 degree angle. But then I realised that that may have been a bad idea because I did get some ripples. Um, I don't know if you can see in the video, but I did manage to resolve it. And um, once I melted the lace with the elastic band. So then quickly, just before we melted the back of the lace, whilst her hands are still in place, um, I just quickly carved out the front of her hair where the fringe will be. So I forgot to mention those pieces of lace where we cut um, for the um, back of her head. We want to keep those pieces because we're going to use that to cover where her ear is. So then I used my rat tail comb and then carved out a semicircle and then place it to where her ear is. And I see if I like it and then I then go with my glue and then I place the piece there.
after gluing in place in the lace I then go in and sew the top half of that um, piece of hair so that it's secure in place. So I then repeat the same process on the other side of her head and then I go in with my um, bundles to sew in on the top part of her head. So when sewing in the bundles I find it easier to work from top and then work my way down in a spiral. Different hairstylists have their own um, methods of doing this. Some like to use glue, but me personally, I prefer sewing the bundles. Um, that way, if my client wanted to reuse those bundles, she could. So now after I sew in the bundles, um, I forgot to record, I did set the perimeter of her head. I then go in and start cutting off the lace that we don't need. So I don't know if you can see but on the sides of her nape um, it looks really unnatural and very thick so I do go in with my tweezers and start tweezing. I use my hot comb and the blow dryer to kind of make sure that it looks more natural. So I repeat the process of me tweezing um, and flattening her hair at the back on the other side as well. Um, at this point we then realised that um, time was against us and we had to hurry because Rachel had work. Um, so now I am using my wax stick and my hot comb and then I will start to gather the hair into a ponytail um, using my um, Got to be free spray and the blow dryer on cool and hot heat. So I don't know if you've gathered at this point, I love working in sections, um, it's my preferred method of doing hair, it just makes sure that I'm consistent throughout um, and I take my time in every section, not rushing anything.
So one thing that I wish that I had done beforehand was straighten the frontals just to make sure that all the kinks were out um, beforehand because I had to work extra hard with the hot comb to make sure that all the kinks and the bumps were out when slicking the um, frontal into a pony. So um, I know you can see the little bit of stocking cap showing on the other side, um, I do rectify that um, as the video goes along so please don't be alarmed, it does get fixed. One of the useful tips when um, doing high pony is to allow your client to put their head back slightly and not forward. This avoids the bump that you get sometimes um, when doing ponies. So just a useful tip. So initially I wanted to wrap the hairband around her head but then I realised that I was at risk of um, moving the um, slickness that I've done so what I did was attach two bobby pins to the hairband push one of the bobby pins in her pony and then wrapped the hairband around and then secured it in place with the other bobby pin honestly the bobby pin hairband hack is literally a game changer um, this ensures that your hair doesn't move um, it's as slick as it can be and yeah definitely try it out so now I am curling all the pieces of hair in her ponytail with a tight curl wand um, I absolutely love this style on um, Rachel especially as I start to pin it up however I do wish I used a bigger barrel Initially, I wanted the curls to look like roses, but then I realized maybe I should have used a bigger wand and positioned them in a way that I wanted to more to give that rose effect. So here you see me pinning up all the individual curls into a bun. I did end up leaving some strands of hair down because I wanted to give that effortless bun type of feel without it looking too uniform. I'm actually pleased with how things turned out given this is my first um, pin-up hairstyle I've done. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased about that.
and then use my small wand and then lightly do some effortless um, baby hairs at the back without doing too much just kind of like effortless messy type leftover hairs So I then use my hot comb to lay her front fringe down and then my big barrel wand to just curl her hair into this lovely type side fringe. So then after about four and a half hours <laughs> we are now done with this look i absolutely love this look on rachel and here's the back looking good looking good and sleep please would have this turned out and she is too <laughs> so we are now coming towards the end of this video um if you would like to see more videos like this Please subscribe to my channel so I know that you guys are interested in these videos um, and I'll catch you in my next one.